Welcome back, everybody, to Callus Draft League. As you know, we are in the finals. You guys have seen the drafts, and now it is time to play the matches. As always, link to the draft in the description if you want to refresh yourself on how we got here. This is an individual draft. This is a best of three. It is 48 against Vaz playing as Synodin. As you guys probably know, if you've been following the tournament, 48 is a member of the green team, whereas Vaz, Synodin, is on the top for the purple team. Here is game one in their best of three. Smeargle lead. Well, that's going to be immediately forced out by Aerodactyl, but it probably wanted to spike or spore, something to that effect. Earthquake, unfortunately, is not the correct prediction, and that's going to give 48 a free Dragon Dance, which is going to scare away Entei with the threat of Earthquake, which is what comes down. However, gets intimidated and blinked by Gyra. Doesn't deter him from dancing again, but my Lotic does force him out, and the immediate Ice Beam crit is going to delete the Smeargle, which is unfortunate for 48. Non-crit would have been survived, then it would outspeed the Milotic and get a Spore or a Spike off, but it is not to be. And the first lead of the game goes to Vaz. Jinx calm minds up behind a substitute. Granted, staring down a fire poke, but a sleeping fire poke. And if it has psychic rather than ice beam as an attacking move, it could do a lot of damage here. Entei wakes up and also starts to calm mind up. So three boosts as opposed to just one right now. Lovely Kiss does, however, put it back to sleep after Flamethrower pops the sub. Doesn't wake up, and sub comes down again. Three boosts to one. Wakey, wakey. Flamethrower again pops the sub. And the ice beam there is not bad at 40%, but the faster Entei, and that's kind of weird to me, seems to have the advantage here. Lovely Kiss does put it back to sleep yet again, but Entei far healthier at this moment. Ice beam 37%. will probably live another when it's at 42. Doesn't wake. And gets an uncooperative damage roll. Pretty unlucky there. Obviously, based on the damage it did the turn before, we know that it could have lived that in many scenarios. But it was not to be. So that's going to catch 48 up a bit. They both do have unrevealed. Lovely Kiss with its imperfect accuracy has been very cooperative for 48. Landing yet again, this time on my low tick. Kind of surprised he didn't go to Regice before, but that will certainly deal with it now. And that's a good T-Wave on the way in as well. Metacham definitely doesn't like being paralyzed. Going to go for Focus Punch. Going to be Intimidated against. Does get off through Para and still does a ton despite Resistance and Intimidate. And he's going to have the balls to stay in and Focus Punch again on a Dragon Dance turn. Yeah, he crit, but great call out there. An outplay turn for sure for 48. And that is going to give him the lead. 5-4 to four now. More Dragon Dancing. There's been a good amount of that in this game. My Lotic, even though it's sleeping, is still going to deter him from staying in. And I guess that's the right call because it does wake here and go for Ice Beam. This time Metacham does full para, so it's going to be dead to the follow-up surf. And there it is. 4-4 four to four game. Unrevealed's on both sides. Two of them for 48. One of them... For Vaz, another lovely kiss connection. It cannot miss. And Regice, of course, does not insta-wake. Substitute comes down, and now we begin the CM dance. But it has Seismic Toss, which is exactly what it needs. If it were just Bolt Beam, it might struggle here. But S-Toss, obviously, will always break the Substitute when it gets off. There's a fast wake-up. But Lovely Kiss is yet to miss. And there it is connecting yet again. Might as well be 100% accurate. It will not miss in this game. But it's another fast wake up. Jinx can make another sub here. Finally whiffs on Lovely Kiss. And gets hit with T-Wave. Which is an outplay for Vaz. Because obviously had he anticipated the Thunder Wave. He could have just blocked it with Substitute. But he knew Lovely Kiss was coming. Click T-Wave. And the Jinx is now basically worthless, though 48 does decide to keep it as fodder for later. Heracross is very dangerous here, especially when the Reg Ice is asleep. Rock Slide there gets the wake, but gets the flinch. And reversal from 75% is a bit weird, but when the opposing Pokemon is weak to fighting and at just 
I guess it will suffice. Substitute coming down. Obviously going to try to go down to a pinch berry, which is almost certainly Salik. Gets both a crit and a flinch with Rock Slide there. That's pretty lucky, but then he misses the follow-up. So Rock Slide giveth, Rock Slide taketh. SD. And recover. So that's two Swords Dances. A plus four Heracross here. Substitute and Surf, respectively. Eating Salic Berry. Reversal. Why reversal? Why didn't we substitute again? He must have messed up the EVs, which is unfortunate. And I think it really matters in this case. It might cost him the game. Have the Heracross gone down to 1 HP there, as it is supposed to, rather than clicking reversal at 25%. I believe it just sweeps. As it stands, the outcome of this game is in question. Hidden Power does a big chunk there, but Bulk Up will prevent him from being killed by the next one, pending a critical hit, which doesn't come. Rock Slide there, as long as it connects, will kill, and it does. Now it is Kabutops only for 48 against two Pokemon from Vaz. Both of them fail with Endure and Protect respectively. Now Swords Dance comes down, as does Bulk Up. That is a plus three, plus four Yama. Now it protects again. Stab Rock Slide there. That's going to be a tough sell between the Resistance and all the Bulk Up defensive boosts. But that seems to be the best option he's got, unless... Vaz walks in to an Endure and sets up the Flail, but that is not the case. He clicks Cross Chop on a Swords Dance turn, Accuracy cooperates, and Vaz is going to kill the Kabutops and take Game 1 against 48. Gotta call it as I see it, as cool as that game was, as close as it ended up being, that felt like a pretty big throw from 48. He messed up the EVs on the Heracross, and had he just been able to sub one more time and go down to 1 HP like he's supposed to, totally different game, clean sweep with Hera, and we are 1048 rather than what actually happened, 10 Vaz, given the way that it played out due to the critical builder mistake from 48. So that moves us over to game two, keeping in mind it is a best of three, so... 48 still with wiggle room to come back, and it is 0-0 between these teams right now, so the world doesn't end if you lose here, but obviously you want to get your team off to a good start. Vaz right now looking better to do that with the 1-0 lead. Here's game two. They're going to stay in the positions they were already in, so 48's on the bottom. Vaz as Sinadin is on the top. Advantage with the lead again for 48. Regirock is going to force out Zapdos. T-Wave on the switch, going to find a natural Curemon, and here is Dugtrio, going to try to pick off Hypno. And they're both, yeah, I mean, Hypno can't go anywhere with Arena Trap, so Boz deems this worth trying. He's going to fish over and over again until he runs out of Hidden Power Bug PP to land a critical hit. And of course, only half of these HP bugs are actually landing. Because 48 is simply alternating between Wish and Protect every turn. So, taking a look at the PP, 24 of them, 12 of them, or up to 12 of them, are going to hit. And that is pretty coin flippy as far as whether or not you ever find that crit. Not the most riveting content, but... I mean, 48 has no option. If he's going to stay in, which he's being forced to do because of Arena Trap... This is really the only thing to do. Just going to try to PP stall it out. And even if he does succeed in that, it's not like the Duck Trio is dead or anything. It's just out of HP bugs. But it can come back another day. I would like to point out the irony here. I would like to point out the, the mistake here. The same way that people like to click HP bug against Starmie, for example. Earthquake would actually do more. Base hidden power, uh, base power of hidden power is 70, doubled because of super effective, so 140. Whereas earthquake base 100, get the 1.5 bonus because of stab, gives you 150. So the fundamental mistake here is not going for earthquake. Now, granted, 
you could argue that it's not a mistake because Earthquake would also not be a one-hit KO ever. So you're going for a two-hit KO either way. Might as well go for the move that has more PP. So that's valid. You can go for HP Bug for that reason because it gives you more opportunities. But I do want to point out in the future, in situations like this when the opponent does not have Wish and Protect, when it is not a PP stall, Earthquake actually does more to Hypno or Starmie or most other things in this situation. Celebi, obviously the exception, then HP Bug would. That was weird timing. That was the very, very last HP Bug. And there's another critical hit for Vaz, who's already up a game. So getting a little frustrated. 48 with a comment or two in the battle chat. His 4 is low. His Hypno's gone. Like I said, Doutrio did run out of it. I guess he's got one. He has one HP bug. But that was the last one that was ever going to hit because of Protect. But clear advantage here for Vaz. 48 is going to try to get there with Raikou, but he's going to see the bad news. The Umbreon is teched out with an unlikely HP ground. What are the odds of that? But yeah, he must have anticipated the possibility of the Raikou. Obviously, the Umbreon with HP ground would be pretty crappy if it didn't get the Raikou matchup, but it did. And yeah, I mean, all he has to do is pop the sub, right? Because Dunk Trio can finish it off and do the rest of the job. Earthquake, obviously, gonna kill there. And that leaves us in a 4-5 to five with Vaz in the lead. Keeping in mind that it's almost a 5-3 to three because the Fortress is very low for 48. And by very low, I mean 0 as it comes into Thunderbolt here. So it is a 5-3 to three advantage now. But stuff is dropping left and right. Make that 4-3. to three. Now Arcanine is going to come in for the first time. So they both have one unrevealed in the back. Regirock comes in. Resist Flamethrower. Takes only 15% and gets lefties back. Toxic puts a clock on it. But T-Wave there is obviously good against the Arcanine. Rock Slide also would be good against the Arcanine. Here comes Gengar. Good thing. Beat up though. Man, does he just not have a switch into the Gengar? He's just going to let the Doug Trio go. The beat up is unremarkable here, keeping in mind that only three Pokemon are actually triggering for beat up because two of them are down and one of them is paralyzed. So only the Starmie, the Doug Trio, and whatever the last poke is are actually using beat up here. It is pretty underwhelming. Never going to kill this Gengar. Surprised that he didn't do this a while ago, but the Arcanine reappears into the Gar. Full power comes down. Fair enough. Don't know what he would have done to the Regirock there. That would have been exciting, but might as well go for something. Deltrio gets foddered here, and Starmie comes in against Regirock. Obviously a threat with any kind of water attack. Turns out to be the big boy water attack, Hydro Pump. Critical hit there. Probably didn't matter, but Regirock drops. And we've got ourselves a 3-2. to two. Make that a 2-2 two to two as Thunderbolt crits. Kingdra in the back for Vaz. If that cleans it up, he wins the match. But he keeps it in to get boomed on, so it comes down to the last poke. It's the champ. Going to go for Surf. Wouldn't have even killed with a crit. Brick Break takes him down, and we've got Arcanine on Machamp for the game. Intimidate comes down, but Arcanine is paralyzed. Going to go for Extreme Speed. Kind of surprised that he didn't just go for Flamethrower there. Rock Slide there. Two of them. Doesn't kill. Flamethrower there with a crit would have killed, but he doesn't find it. He's going to have to try to survive Rock Slide, click Flamethrower, then follow up with Extreme Speed. None of that happens because he full paras and then dies to the Rock Slide. So... In a tight one that seemingly could have gone either way, it is going to be a victory for 48, and he is going to force a Game 3 to decide who wins this opening match of the Finals. And here is that Game 3, with 48 for the final time on the bottom, and Sinadin, that's Vaz, on the top. Miltank and Jolteon, respectively. And that is not a good start for Vaz, as he gets his Dragonite paralyzed by the Turn 1 T-Wave, from the cow. Seismic Toss is coming down now. Here's another one. Steelix can handle that no problem. Here comes Registeel. And that boom. Underwhelming. But he probably anticipated that. Because he probably picked up on the fact. That Steelix did not have leftovers. 
Therefore, it's probably choice banded. So if it's going to be CB boom, you go to something that resists boom. Registeel will suffice. So a clear lead for 48. Not only up a Pokemon, but also the relevant para on the Dragonite to start this game. Also, Breloom is not going to get anywhere with Weezing on the other side, but he can at least subseed it and presumably eventually make the Weezing switch. But as far as cracking through, we'll see if he's able to do that. Right now, he is just being stubborn with the subseed. And this is something that he can do for a very long time in a Sandless game. So eventually, 48, even though he can obviously pop the sub with the Stab Sludge Bomb, is going to have to get out of the way at some point. Here comes Vaporeon. Of course, it is another sub. He's not yet clicked Spore, but he, or he did click Spore. When did I miss that? Who got Spored? Registeel got Spored. Don't mind me. Here comes Focus Punch. And Weezing showing you how ridiculously bulky it is. It takes just 27% from a Stab Focus Punch from Breloom. Breloom, who has a higher attack stat than Heracross. That is how damn bulky Weezing is. There's Substitute and Sludge Bomb again. Once again, it is the obnoxious Subseed Lock. Question is, can he ever Focus Punch and hit something other than the Weezing? That's where the real damage would come in. Substitute again. Yeah, I mean, the way that he's going to have to do it is he's going to have to predict the Weezing switch turn and click Focus Punch then. Because obviously if Weezing switches out as the Breloom uses Substitute, the Weezing's just going to come right back to eat the Focus Punch. I guess 48 is just going to try to PP stall him out of Substitutes. He's used more than half of them already. Seven left, six left. Fair enough. I mean, the Weezing's only taking Leech Seed damage, so we can do this for a while. And both of them are being stubborn. Both of them sticking it out. Now only five substitutes left. Four substitutes left. Something's got to give. Weezing is getting low. Goes for it again. Three substitutes left. It's going to be close. Two substitutes left. Also, only two Sludge Bombs left, by the way. That's relevant. One Substitute and one Sludge Bomb. We're going to use the last one for both. Well, that's the last Sub. And that's the last Sludge Bomb. Fair enough. So, those moves are gone. What do you do from here? You go to Dragonite and you fail Will-O-Wisp against a Paralyzed Pokemon, respectively. Fair enough. Here comes Focus Punch. Gets immediately Pain Split. And that Focus Punch is underwhelming. 13% is all we're going to get out of that. Miltek comes in as the Dragonite paralyzes. Swampert now. S-Toss. We saw earlier that it's got Sub. We can also observe that it doesn't have Lefties. Probably, yep. Probably looking at Salak Endeavor Pert. And it does, in fact, pop the Salak here. Could kill the mill tank with a water attack, which is what it goes for. It's going to swing and miss on Hydro Pump, but it's on Blissey rather than mill tank, so it would have taken it just fine. And I don't know why he clicked Substitute there. I'm going to give him credit for a misclick. I mean, he was at 17%, so, I mean, he obviously knows that he can't sub. Could have been a brain fart. I'm going to give him credit for the misclick, but that was obviously not the right play. And the lead gets bigger for 48, though he does lose his Glalie here to the boosted Lax. The formerly boosted Lax, immediately hazed away by Broken Weezing, who's back up to 100%. This Pokemon is so dumb and so OP. Why are people not round one picking this thing? They really should be. Nevertheless, Vaz is going to start cursing up again. Miltank finds the opportunity to get a Milk Drink off. Body Slam 37%, no para. Another Milk Drink. And a full para. Fair enough. 48 still stable. Heal Bell gets rid of some of the problems. 
And lacks full powers again. So nothing preventing Weezing from coming back in. Here it is. Body slam 31%. Doesn't find the para. Haze is almost certainly coming. There goes the curse boost. Another body slam. 20%. Still no para. Pain split incoming now. And Weezing back up to a hundo. Just like that. Boz is not having a good time finding paras with body slams. But he's having a pretty good time finding full paras for himself. There's another one. There we go. Body slam does get the added effect para finally. Though, of course, we know the mill tank has heal bell. Well, can't heal bell when you're full para. So, Breloom finds an opportunity to get back in. And what do you know? We're back to this matchup. Leech Seed on the Weezing. No subs, no sludge bombs. And he still doesn't want to get it burnt. He's going to let the Jolteon get burnt rather than the play he made last time, which was to go to the already paralyzed Dragonite. Jolteon is going to sub and presumably pass that, but it can be broken every time by Estos regardless of what he passes to. And that's what's going to occur. Lax was the recipient, stepping on two spikes to do it. And he's going to full para yet again. Estos one more time. Full para again. Estos a third time. And finally a rest. That would have been an infuriating third full para if that's the way it happened. But he does get the rest off better late than never. Going to kill two sleep turns before getting roared away. Dragonite staring down a Vaporeon that he doesn't think has Ice Beam. And indeed, Thunder is going to take him out with the 70% accuracy through the para. So a lot of the time that was not going to connect. But down goes Vaporeon. Wish floating. Registeel going to be the one to take it. We've got ourselves a 4-4 four four in a longer game here. 62 turns and counting. Seismic Toss on the Lax. Lax, of course, is due to wake up. Killed both the sleep turns before. Wakey, wakey, there is Curse. Got to be very weary about the possibility of getting boomed on here, though. T-Wave, and what do you know it? More full power. Lax has done that many times, it seems. Seismic Toss and Body Slam there. Neither one exciting damage-wise, but he does find the added effect para. And now they're both going to full power, which means they just both get some lefties. Seismic Toss, EQ, that's pretty big damage, 48. And now Weezing returns. That boost is going to be for naught. It is about to get hazed away. And on Q, no more boost. And seemingly on Q, full para. Now Registeel and rest, fair enough. If you want to boom on it, now would be a fantastic time. But he full paras. And that's also going to go for rest. Meaning it almost certainly does not have boom. Weezing and Dragonite. Last time it went for focus punch and it did nothing. Pain split there. Actually hurt him more than it helped him. That was not a good pain split. Misclick Endor anticipating a switch. I guess. This pain split benefits him. But hidden power there. Hidden Power Psychic from Dragonite. Sure, I mean, in the last game in particular, when you have a pretty good idea of what's coming, you can make weird decisions that have weird texts like that. So, Hidden Power Psychic on Dragonite. Never thought I'd see the day, but here we are. Not to miss the fact that the Breloom went down, so 48 with the 4-3 to three lead here. That Ice Beam is going to show us it is a thick fat lax rather than immunity. Takes basically nothing. The Ice Beam does not even negate leftovers. And there is Curse. More T-Wave. Body Slam with a crit and a para. The perfect Body Slam there. Blissey may be in danger now. Full para. But so does Lax to bail Blissey out. Full para again though. And this time Body Slam gets off. So Blissey drops. And we've got ourselves a 3-3 three three situation. Blissey being down could end up being pretty important. Nothing stops that Jolteon, though it is burnt from before, if he can manage to kill the Registeel. Dragonite comes in, gets Seismic Tossed, goes for Focus Punch again. Fishing for full powers, of course, but has not found one. 
Back to Lax now. And ironically, there's the full power. But how could he have known that? Going to go straight for Body Slam. Probably trying to catch the Weezing and get that paralyzed on the way in. Heel Bell. Problems go away. And we begin boosting. Got eight curses left, which is still a pretty good amount. He doesn't have to go the full way to plus six plus six. If he can damage the Weezing in any meaningful way, or if he can stall the Blissey, or by the Blissey I mean the Mill Tank out of Heel Bells, then maybe he'll be in business. But for now, one or two boosts will suffice to put meaningful pressure on anything other than the Weezing. Earthquake there, 47%. No chance of killing him with a follow-up. Seismic Toss. And he's going to go for another Curse. Fair enough. I would like to see him Body Slam here, I think. Well, we'll never know. And Earthquake would have been better, but he full parried. Seismic Toss again. And EQ. Fair enough. Critical hit. So down goes Registeel. Vaz threatening to take the match on the back of this Lax unless he can find another full para. But he doesn't. The critical rest gets off. And now it's kind of tricky. Weezing has a really good pain split here unless Lax switches, which he does. And that pain split, again, is going to hurt him more than help him. But this time the pain split made sense. I The last one was a little weird, but... Dragonite does land Focus Punch on Miltank. That's one critter full power away from death. Going to go for it again. But Seismic Toss disrupts it. 2% Dragonite. Might as well give it another shot. Goes for it one more time. But Seismic Toss happens. So Dragonite is down. And we've got ourselves a 2-2 two -to -two situation. And the Jolteon is pretty low. That's a big Thunderbolt. But Miltank cooperates again. Getting an attack off again. Through the para. So last Mon Lax against Miltank and Weezing. Body Slam. We've got ourselves a 1v1. It's going to be a Weezing that doesn't have any Sludge Bombs against the Lax. And this is actually, this is going to come down to a PP stall. So boy, oh boy, is this going to be an ending to this match. This is game three. This is for the match. We've got... 7 Curses, 11 Body Slams, 12 Rests, 13 Earthquakes, and obviously while it's sleeping it doesn't burn PP. On the other side, and I hate that Body Slam. No! That might be a game-losing mistake. No! Don't Body Slam him. If you paralyze him, he skips turns and doesn't have to waste PP. No! You want to waste all the Earthquakes way before you start body slamming. That could be a problem now. I mean, we can do a quick check, see where we are on PP. But uh, by my count, because Hayes has such ridiculously high PP, it sure as hell looks to me like the Lax is going to go down to struggle first. Wheezing here with over 80 PP, 86 PP still worth of moves. And Lax with nowhere near that. Lax with only about 30, maybe a little more than 30. And he can kill a couple extra turns when he's sleeping, but still, it is not even close. And that's without even factoring in the fact that Weezing is paralyzed and is going to skip roughly every fourth turn because of that. So they're going to go through the motions, which very much their prerogative, but... As weird as it's got to be, this is not the traditional way that Weezing counters Lax, but Weezing is nevertheless going to beat Lax here almost certainly. The PP stall feels inevitably like it is going to go the way of 48. So I believe even though he screwed up game one with those weird Heracross EVs, I believe he has found a way to win the match. And a hell of a close match it has been. This one definitely could have gone either way. This is one of the important ones, one of the more swingy ones between these two teams. They're playing it out. We're about to cross turn 130. I will check once again on PP. Lax getting pretty low. Like I said, only about 30 at this point, whereas Weezing could do this all day. Weezing has more than 60 PP still in the tank. 
yeah. I, I don't even... I, I haven't calced it out because I'm too fat and lazy, but I feel like even in a hypothetical world where Weezing never, never full powers, just every single time it uses an actual attack, I think even then he loses the PP stall. And obviously never paralyzing is not realistic. He is going to power sometimes. I don't see any way out of this from Vaz's seat. He's trying. I mean, he obviously wants to win and set his team up on the right foot. It is finals. His team's counting on him. I get it. I don't fault him one bit for going through the motions. 100% his prerogative. But I just don't see a way out. Now he's going to start killing off the earthquakes, which I think he should have done before. But, I mean, eventually he would have had to have started to body slam. And, yeah, I mean, the odds are overwhelming that it's eventually going to find a para. He got unlucky in that the first one found a para. But I just don't think it truly makes a difference here. The PP discrepancy is just too wide. He's got just 20 PP left, whereas Weezing has that in Haze alone. Never mind all the Pain Splits and Will-O-Wisps. Hey, Vaz fighting the good fight, and if he goes the whole way with this, if he goes down to struggle, we're going to go well over 150 turns here. But he will be disappointed by how much damage his struggle does, especially if he's burnt. It's just not going to do it. I've seen ADV games. I've commentated on ADV games where something wins with struggle. Something actually eventually knocks out the other poke. Actually wins the game by struggle beating them down. It's a thing. But it's not going to be a thing in this game. It just isn't. It just won't do enough damage to the ultra bulky, uber good wheezing. The greatest mod in the damn format. This thing really, truly should be first picked. It's been so ridiculously good. It's been by far the MVP for 48 in this game. And it is a bit unlucky since it is just a 1 in 3 chance that Vaz happened to bring the lax when the wheezing came. But how the format rolls sometimes... Lax now in single-digit PP after that earthquake. He has only five body slams and four rests and nothing left in the tank. And a mountain of PP, over 40 PP, nearly 50 PP in fact, still remaining for wheezing. Not even close. 40 plus PP discrepancy. Between these mons. We're going the full way. I don't I don't know what the record is. But this might be the longest game of the tour. I don't know if we've had any cross 200. And I don't know that this is going to cross 200. But. If we go the full way. We're in for a bit of a ride. Especially because he's killing off sleep turns with rest. But Rust is the only move he's got. He's got three of those, and that is it. That is the totality of his remaining PP at this point. And as we see, Venusaur still has Venusaur. Weezing. I think I did that before. I don't know why I do that. They're both poison, but they're not really that much alike. I don't know why I get those two mentally scrambled. But Weezing still has plenty of PP. And the Lax is, in fact, struggling, and the struggle is real. Just 8% damage in a Sandless game against something with Leftovers. No chance. And now he's doing 4% with struggle because of the burn. Vaz fought the good fight. Close games. All three games were close. All three games could have gone either way. His teammates, I'm sure, are going to appreciate his effort. But it just isn't his day. He's going to be PP stalled out and will eventually die 
very slowly to his own struggle recoil and to the burn. But the wheezing is simply in no danger here whatsoever. Absolutely his prerogative to play it out. But we have a foregone conclusion here. So and for those of you who actually stuck it out to this point, I don't know how much my viewer attention goes this far when it is a foregone conclusion who's going to win here. And there is the concession. But for those of you who are still watching the video, go ahead and hit that like button. I appreciate you guys watching. This was obviously not the most riveting late game that we've ever seen. But yeah, I bring the matches to you as they happened. This is the way that it went. And like I said, certainly Vaz's prerogative to go through the motions here. But even after all that, 176 turns, even after all that, still... 34 PP remaining for the wheezing, and that's without factoring in turns that it paralyzes. So, really not even close. Vaz really basically had no chance to ever win this PP stall. An unfortunate and frustrating way to go, for sure. But like I said, only the first match between these teams. Plenty of room for either team to still win it. But, as it stands, 2-1 victory for 48, and therefore a 1-0 lead for the green team. I appreciate you guys watching. All the finals matches are going to be on this channel. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next video.